Hi everyone, welcome back to Volcano Tuesdays. My name is Gina. I work as an educator with the Mount St. Helens Institute. We are a nonprofit that teaches about the science and stories of Mount St. Helens, and we hope to inspire the curiosity and questions that you have about volcanoes. Volcano Tuesdays is a series that includes weekly live demonstrations of activities that you can do at home. Each week also includes a set of challenges that we ask you to complete on your own and submit to us. And remember that the questions that you have about volcanoes inform what we teach about each week. So fill out the form on our website and let us know what you want to learn about volcanoes. I want to begin by showing some of the amazing results that came in from last week for people who completed their volcano self-portrait. If we flip over here, I'd like to show first an example of someone drawing along with all of the coloring supplies out. Way to go. We had a submission from Jada in fourth grade who drew an excellent diagram of the volcano with all of the parts labeled in the side on a key. Way to go, Jada. I love the texture in the ash cloud. This looks fabulous. We had a submission from Lucy in Massachusetts who did an amazing job writing in all of her connections to the volcano. So this is truly a beautiful self-portrait. Thank you, Lucy, all the way from Massachusetts. We had a submission from Henry, Henry from Camus in first grade, first grade who completed his volcano self-portrait by labeling the various parts filling it in and then also submitted to us the level two of the challenge, which was to draw a volcano. And there that is. Way to go, Henry. And we also had a friend in Portland, Oregon, Taylor, do an amazingly beautiful job on her drawing for her self-portrait. She later colored it in. Way to go, Taylor. There were some questions last week about the crystals inside the magma chamber. And I want to let you know that we're going to talk about crystals a lot more in upcoming Volcano Tuesdays. But as a quick note, we mentioned that sometimes the crystals inside the rocks growing underground inside the volcanoes take a long time to form. And I was doing some research this morning to try to get some numbers. And it's very difficult for us to know how long it takes to grow a mineral because these processes happen underground and we cannot see them with our eyes. But from what I found, many minerals, the minerals that you can see with your eye, so if I had a rock and I could see the crystals, those can take over a hundred years, sometimes a thousand years to grow. They're very slow growing. So tune back into other Volcano Tuesdays and we'll talk more about crystals and minerals. But what I want to do this week is focus us because last week we learned about the structure of a volcano and how volcanoes around the world all have certain features in common. This week we are going to focus on the human side of the story. How do volcanoes affect us, affect people? To do this, we are first going to learn about volcanic hazards. We're going to talk about when a volcano erupts, what happens, what are common things that happen. For today, you are going to need a couple of things. You are going to need yourself, a space to draw, a blank piece of paper, and some coloring supplies. We're going to make one, maybe two drawings, so if you want to have more than one piece of paper, that's fine. And remember, if you need time to go get your uh, activity, the supplies for this activity, you can pause this video and restart it at any time. I'm going to flip over to my webcam and show you my drawing setup. But before I do that, I want to just define some vocabulary for us. So we're going to talk today about the ways in which volcanoes affect people. And we're going to make a drawing about what we call volcanic hazards. Hazards are unavoidable risks or dangers. And so these are processes that occur when volcanoes erupt that we cannot avoid necessarily. We can maybe move out of the way, but these processes are happening. So when I use the word hazards, that's what we mean, unavoidable risks or dangers. Now I'm going to flip over to my webcam and begin to draw the hazards made by volcanoes. The first thing 
that I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my volcano. And what I just showed you here, if you would like to, we put a drawing up on our website. There's a PDF that you can click and download if you want to uh, color this drawing in versus draw your own. But I'm going to use this drawing as reference and begin to draw my own version of this drawing. Don't worry about the words, we will define them all. So going over to my drawing, the first thing I'm going to do is outline the shape of my volcano. Then I'm going to add a little bit of contour to give the volcano a little bit of three-dimensional shape. Sometimes coming off of my volcano, there are large drainages where the material is eroding and draining the start of rivers. So I'm going to draw one of these in the foreground. Inside these drainages are cobbles and sticks and rocks and boulders. So I'm going to draw some of that into the texture of my volcano as well. Beautiful. So there is my proto-volcano. And you know what? Let's add a sun into our drawing. It might be the sun again. Remember, you can get creative and add whatever you like to our drawing, but we are going to start with just one volcano here. Now, we're going to talk about six different types of hazards that affect these volcanoes. And to do that, I'm going to play six short videos that show us about the hazards. The first one that we're going to start with is ash. And I'm going to begin on my drawing by drawing the ash cloud. Not all volcanoes belch a lot of ash up into the air, but many of them do. Sometimes this ash has a lot of broken up pieces of rock and sometimes it more, contains more gases. Either way, I'm going to make an ash cloud and put little dots in it. To show you a video of some volcanoes belching ash, Let's check out this first video. This is one of my favorite volcanoes in Alaska. The sun caught the colors and made everything look incredibly beautiful and orange. This is of another volcano and you can see the ash columns can be dark colored because they contain bits of pulverized pieces of rock, ash fragments. So look at this video and then maybe annotate your drawing a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of three dimension to my drawing to reflect what I'm seeing here. If we remember from volcano yoga, the astronauts in Helens went up into the atmosphere for nine hours after the eruption. We're going to label this hazard number one. For volcanic ash. The next hazard that we're going to talk about is the ash fall. So what falls from the ash cloud down. I'm going to label this hazard number two.
And I'm going to show you a video as you draw your ash fall of some ash falling, what it looks like on the ground for people experiencing it. So here is a video of folks experiencing ash fall. And you can see that it colors the sky. It almost looks like snow, but instead of snow falling, it is pieces of volcanic ash. So think about that texture and maybe add a little bit of texture to what's falling from the sky in your volcano. The next hazard that we're going to talk about are called pyroclastic flows. I'm going to play the video first because these are often something that people who do not live around volcanoes know about. And we'll draw this a little bit bigger so we can see it well. Pyroclastic flows are one of the most deadly of volcanic hazards. They are rapidly moving avalanches of hot rock, dust, and gas that flow down according to gravity. Similar to how the ash cloud flows up with a lot of energy, pyroclastic flows flow downwards. And you can see they move very, they can move very fast. And what we cannot see in this video, but we can imagine is that they are extremely, extremely hot. So watch these videos for a moment and think about this hazard. And then we're gonna flip over to our drawings and draw a pyroclastic flow. Now pyro means hot and clastic means rock. So pyroclastic means hot rock, a flow of hot material. I'm gonna draw this pyroclastic flow on one side of my volcano and label it as number three. And watching in that video how the flow was a roiling cloud, I'm going to add some three-dimensional texture to my drawing. Beautiful. The fourth hazard that we are going to talk about is what happens when material that is erupting flows down into the drainage channels. We call these debris flows lahars, and we'll begin again by watching a video so that we have some context for what we're drawing. I will, one more time, make this video larger for us. Lahars are when the Hot material erupting from the volcano mixes with snow, ice, or other water and begins flowing down, creating these massive debris flows. They can move very quickly and they can carry really large boulders and rocks. Lahars can affect people who live really far from volcanoes because they flow down the river channel so, for example, at Mount St. Helens, when the mountain erupted in 1980, the lahar from Mount St. Helens flew ten, flowed tens of miles down all the way to meeting the Columbia River just north of Portland. So I'm going to draw this lahar in my river channel and adding in maybe more boulders and rocks. And I'm going to label this as number four. Lahars, as you see, are kind of look like a river of concrete. There's a lot of sand and other sized materials. So I'm going to add a lot of dots to represent that as well.
I'm also going to extend my lahar to the bottom of the page, suggesting that it flows off the page because lahars can flow for extremely long distances. Inside my lahar, I might have some larger boulders and some sticks. That is my hazard number four. The fifth hazard that I'm going to draw is one that most people are a bit more familiar with, and that is of a lava flow. So here is a video showing lava flowing from some of the volcanoes in Hawaii and other volcanoes around the world. On my drawing, I'm going to add the lava flow to the side. I'm also going to color my lava flow in dark. because often the material that comes from volcanoes when it turns into hard rock is dark in color. Thanks, videos. <laughs> now, I'm going to label the lava flow as number five. And the final hazard that we're going to talk about are one of my favorite features about volcanoes. And this is what happens when volcanoes have particularly explosive eruptions. So I'll begin by playing this video. And I'm also going to draw this video into full screen mode. Nice. Yay, explosions. So notice in these explosions that there are pieces of rock flying out of the volcano. The explosion consists of lots of gas and pieces of material that are all different sizes, but some of those pieces are incredibly large. You can see one just flew on the side there. You see these pieces flying out. Sometimes they can be as large as maybe uh, a large boulder, maybe the size of a chair, maybe the size of my kitchen table, maybe the size of a car. We call these projectiles, these pieces of material that are flying out of the volcano, bombs. And Bombs are really an exciting thing to find when you're around volcanoes. They have a particular shape sometimes. What we're going to do is on our, we're going to pause this video of things exploding. And on, those beautiful bombs there. Woo! On our drawing, we are going to annotate the sixth volcanic hazard, our bombs. So I'm going to draw these projectiles coming out of the volcano, out of the ash column, with a little tail showing movement. And I'm going to label this hazard number six. And so in our drawing now, we have six different hazards, hazards displayed here. We have our ash column, number one. We have ash fall, number two. We have our pyroclastic flow, number three. We have our lahar, the debris flow, number four. We have our lava flow, most predictable, number five. And we have our bombs, number six. And this shows a drawing of the types of hazards that are common for most volcanoes around the world. All of these hazards created by, vol by volcanoes affect people. And sometimes people are affected in different ways. They remember different things about these volcanoes. 
I'm going to flip over to the full screen for a moment. People who witness volcanoes erupting often remember the events in great detail. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some examples of artwork created by people who witness volcanoes erupting or by people who study volcanoes. And we're going to use this artwork to help us think about how do people relate to volcanoes? Because when people experience all of those crazy things that can happen, bombs and lava flows and pyroclastic flows and ash and ash falling from the sky, it makes a big impression on their lives. Some of the art that we will see emphasizes some of these hazards. Some of the art instead emphasizes the importance of the volcano to the community. Some emphasize the volcanoes as being part of Earth and thus beautiful, and some emphasize the connection of people to the land. As we go through each piece of artwork, I want us to think about what is the artist emphasizing in this artwork. So, as we look at each piece of artwork, we're going to ask two questions. We're going to say, one, what volcanic hazards out of those six hazards that we drew do I see represented in this artwork? And then number two, which of the hazards or why are they exaggerated or not exaggerated? So that means are they made larger maybe than life or not? So let's begin by looking at some examples of art. And for each one, we'll flip back to our drawing and you can be coloring and drawing as we go. So the first piece of art that we're going to look at is here. Now this is a piece of art that was made a long time ago, a hundred years ago in 1902, when a volcano in the Caribbean islands erupted and it was very deadly. This volcano, you can see it in the background. There's light radiating from it. It's way in the background on the side. This volcano created a huge pyroclastic flow. Again, that was the flow of all of the ash flowing down with gravity. The pyroclastic flow flew from that volcano and covered the city. The flow not only stayed on land, but it flowed over the water. And thus, in this painting, you can see that the ships on the water are catching on fire. That's because that hot flow of gas and ash flowed over the water and it was so hot it lit the ships on fire. You can see all of the material coming from the sky. And thus this artist is representing something that was very violent, this eruption, and also made an incredible impact. So on our drawings, look at this painting and look back to your drawing of the different volcanic hazards and think about which hazards is the artist representing. If you want to, on your drawing, you can color in the different hazards. I'm going to take my drawing here and I see in this painting lots of uh, the projectiles falling from the sky. So I'm going to start coloring those. I'm noticing the technique of the artist in highlighting these. I also recognize in the story that the pyroclastic flow was a really important part of this story. So I might add to my drawing of the pyroclastic flow, I'm looking at how the artist has represented it in front of the volcano here. One thing that I do like about this volcano is that the artist is on to highlight the volcano itself with big beams of yellow and light. And that light draws attention to the volcano. I really like that, so I'm gonna add that to my drawing as well. And it might be hard to see my colors, but you can use as many colors as you want. Finally, in this painting, I see lots of projectiles and bombs coming from the sky. So I'm going to highlight those in a red color maybe because it seemed like they were hot and that was part of kind of the intense violence of this eruption. Wow, that is artwork number one. Let's look at another piece of artwork. 
This is a beautiful piece of artwork created by an artist from Mexico. He studied volcanoes and also painted them. He created his own pigments and paint, which was interesting. So he would create his own paint and then use it. And this painting, take a look at it. And again, we're going to think about what type of volcanic hazard do we see that the artist is representing in this painting. So take a look. And then on your drawing, we can begin to draw into our drawing the hazard that we're seeing. So I'm going to come, I'm noticing in this painting, there's a big emphasis on the lahar. I'm sorry if you all can't see this because of the sun. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to color in my lahar because I'm noticing in the front of this painting, in the center, there's a flow coming down that's hot with things burning inside, but it looks to me like the debris flows that we call laharis. That would be hazard number four. So I'm going to begin by coloring in some of this. And you can be creative, as creative as you would like to be. I'm also noticing in the lahar that there's some of the sticks are burning and on fire. So I'm going to add some red here to my lahar sticks. This is a powerful piece. It also looks like there are some lava flows maybe happening from the volcano. So I'm going to take some color and maybe add a little bit to my lava flow here. And also it looks like the artist is representing maybe a pyroclastic flow on the side, but definitely an ash column going up into the sky. Get some different colors here. So I'm going to begin to add some texture and highlights to my ash column. I like how this artist uses all different colors to represent the ash column. And then there's even another volcano erupting behind this volcano. The next piece of artwork that we're going to look at is so large that I'm going to take myself out of the frame. This is a piece that is on display right now at the Portland Art Museum as part of an exhibit about Mount St. Helens, and it shows Mount St. Helens erupting. You can see Mount St. Helens erupting in the background. It's a very abstract piece, so I like to take some time to look at all the different things that are happening. But the artist uses lots of symbolism and imagery in the shapes to evoke the processes occurring in the volcanic eruption. So for example, in the middle of the photograph, right to the left of that, there's maybe a large hot, looks like a meteor or maybe a lava bomb coming down. And then the volcano itself is exploding in all sorts of different ways. So look closely at this piece and then think about what aspects of the volcanic eruptions is the artist highlighting? What aspects of the volcanic eruption do you see? And then begin to annotate your drawing. And I'm going to come in and begin to annotate things that I'm seeing. Maybe over here, and I'm seeing a lot of texture inside the ash cloud going up and more color on the sides. And I'm going to move myself so that we can still see this painting. This painting shows the view of Mount St. Helens erupting from Portland. And you can see the blue of a river looking across the river to see the mountain erupting. And I wonder what people actually saw that day. Could they see? the ash cloud? Could they see the material flowing down the sides of the mountain? What elements of this eruption is the artwork that I want to share with you all is a very interesting poster created from Colombia, the country in South America. And this is a poster that was for an event last year in 2019 that was bringing together community of people who live near volcanoes. Now notice in this image, the volcano is not erupting. 
This image is speaking to a different aspect of volcanoes. What do you see on the volcano in this image? I am seeing a big long river coming down from the volcano. Just like our long river coming down from the volcano here. I am also seeing it looks like some debris flows, so maybe that comes in and maybe there was an old lava flow on the side there. So I'm going to give some color to my lava flow. And there, there's a sunny blue sky behind this volcano. I like this image because it shows the connection of the volcano to the community and also how maybe the hands represent the community's role in being responsible for living near the volcano. Notice the lava flow coming right down, right up close to where a house is. This poster was created to bring people together to learn about the hazards of volcanoes. And instead of being a scary image of a volcano erupting, it instead is a very hopeful image that speaks to community, support, and happiness. I really like this piece of art. So we just looked at examples of art made by people who have lots of experience with volcanoes. The artists were all depicting volcanoes because volcanoes are important to them. Perhaps they witnessed the eruption, like the person who made the painting, the scene from Portland. Perhaps they work with trying to help prepare communities to be prepared for volcanic eruptions and hazards like the poster from Colombia. Similarly, there are aspects of our natural worlds that are important to you and to me. The challenge this week is for us to make a drawing of something that is important to us and think about what aspect of the drawing we want to emphasize. There are two levels of the challenge. First, you can make a piece of art inspired by something important to you in your life. It does not need to be related to volcanoes. For the second level challenge, you're going to find a piece of art or a story that someone has written or created about volcanoes and then make a piece of artwork inspired by that. Maybe that artwork changed the way you kind of see volcanoes or changed the way um, that you relate to volcanoes yourself. Take a moment to identify something that's important to you and I'm going to begin challenge number one by doing a live demonstration of my drawing here. If you want to sign off and do your own drawing at a later point, you're welcome to do so. But for now, I'm going to do a final live drawing. And this is going to be something that is important to me about the natural world. And you'll see what I create in a moment. So I'm going to flip again over to the webcam. And here I've already begun to outline something that's very important to me in the natural world are birds. And I am drawing two colorful swallows called violet green swallows. These birds migrate away in the wintertime and come back in the spring and summer and they live up at Mount St. Helens. When I see them coming to Mount St. Helens, I get very excited. I'm making these birds very large in my drawing because they are an important part of my experience of visiting Mount St. Helens.
Behind these birds, I'm going to draw Mount St. Helens because the volcano is also important to me. This is the view from the north side of the mountain showing where the mountain blasted apart in the large 1980 eruption. Out of the volcano, I'm going to draw a small poof of steam. Now, I'm going to stay on the video and continue coloring in this drawing. You can work on your own drawing to color if you like. You can also sign off. Before I sign off, I just want to give a special thank you and shout out to everyone who's been tuning in for Volcano Tuesdays. And a thank you to all of our partners and sponsors who help us make this online programming possible. Create beautiful artwork, create fun artwork, create interesting artwork, create silly artwork this week, and submit to us on our Volcano Tuesdays page. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.